morning everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Lego Legend of Zelda custom set showcase here on the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at Z0062 based off Skyward Sword with 826 pieces. This is the Battle for the Sacred Flame, of course referencing the Ancient Cistern from Skyward Sword, another dungeon expansion set, the uh, second one in Wave 4. And taking a look, right, let's have a look at that front box art representing some gorgeous art from the upper portion of the ancient cistern. You've got Coloctos menacing around in the background along with a selection of figures. The information about this set shows that it is for ages 8 and up with 826 pieces, retailing for 89.99 Great British Pounds with four minifigures and one brick built character, of course, being Coloctos. Reading our little description for today's set before we jump in and take a look at all the play features that I've managed to cram into this Coloctos mech. Test your strength against the all against the ancient automaton in the all new Lego Legend of Zelda dungeon expansion. Wade through the depths of the ancient system, fighting through long flushed away foes to acquire the legendary whip. But where the wobbly lily pads and find the secret to taking down the fearsome six armed Coloctos to get a hidden reward and find the flame. Including four minifigures in the brick-built Coloctos, this dungeon can be connected to other LEGO Zelda sets for rearrange and creative play. So just as I mentioned, all of these rooms can be rearranged and uh, slotted into the ever-expanding dungeon builder system. We'll be looking at that at the end, as well as a couple of renders of all of the figures with their older counterparts. And if we open up our box, we'll see that there are seven numbered bags and two of the disgustingly rendered instruction manuals. And if we open up those in turn, we'll see that bag one begins by building one of the dungeon rooms and giving us our Skyward Sword Link minifigure. And then bag two finishes off the dungeon layout uh, and gives us our Stalmaster uh, figure as well. And then if we open up manual number two, this is completely dedicated to Coloptos, you'll see that bag three builds like the lower waist, bag four starts the torso, bag five deals with the rest of the torso and the small head, bag six does the arms, and then bag seven builds the alternate form where you can either shove him into his base or uh, you can give him his legs and also includes the two cursed Bacoblin knee figures that are in this custom. So this is what the set looks like all together. Now it does look fairly small on the volume side for 800 pieces and that is because Coloctos is a dense build. Uh, I wanted there to be some focus on the dungeon building system, however the main focus and I think for kids as well would be the giant mech um, and also having a representation of people's one of people's favourite bosses in all time. If we split that up though, you can see that there are a total of four different dungeon like style rooms uh, representing all areas from the upper floors of the ancient system. Doing a two floored system would have just been too difficult to do with our uh, play and also no other dungeon sets have introduced two floors meaning that it wouldn't be very compatible with a wider layout. If we look at this room the first, it's by far the most colourful, the most interesting, uh, and you can see uh, that looking from top down, this does introduce a brand new feature to the dungeon building layout, and that is the option to have your dungeon corridors and like different rooms connect at 45 degrees, and that is introduced by this angled piece here at the beginning, which is really, really great, and it makes the dungeon layout, as you'll see at the end of this video, uh, look a lot better. You can also see that we've included some lily pads, and that's the main feature for this room. Taking a closer look at those, you can see that they're built out of different round tiles and include a couple of flowers on the top. And obviously one of the big uh, mechanics of this dungeon in the game is that they flip over to reveal spikes, allowing you to pass underneath. And that is re represented to an extent here because all of these are built in a way that makes them wobbly. Meaning that as figures step on them, you can pretend to have them like fall over and like bounce off the lily pads and fall in the water. And you can see that all of these have the capability to, uh, to bend and flow out of the way. And I think this is just... A just a little bit of added fun, right, to try and like parkour across them without them falling over, or maybe you could fight a Curse Bow Coblin on it and then he weighs it down and you have to like counterbalance and it's like, oh no, they're, they're all falling over and stuff. Uh, but either way, once you cross those, you'll find a small platform going around the edge, um, and two doors, some small stickers and stuff, just to add a little bit more detail to what is essentially a blank wall. There's nothing interesting really going on here. And you've also got an ornate red column to show like the columned nature of this ground floor. Maybe red is potentially the wrong color however I wanted it to be bright and stand out definitely gives off fire sanctuary vibes as well so looking from the back of course you can see that there are two more dungeon connection points uh, this time at right angles so you've got the 45 degree and then two options so not only does this room act as a 45 degree room but it also gives you two connection options meaning it acts as a fork in the road for uh, custom uh, dungeon layouts 
And then one of those directions you can go is to this small octagonal platform. Now this is supposed to be a simple representation of the room where you get the whip. The chest of course would include, indeed open and include the whip and this is uh, where you could, maybe not, it doesn't have to be, uh, fight the uh, Stalmaster bot, mini boss, which is the mini boss that guards the whip in the real engine system, hence why it's included here. And it's a nice little small platform uh, where you could have a duel. It reminds me of some old idea sets. But the point is, it's a platform with another, it's another room to add to the system. And you can see it's got one pin connection at the bottom. Then if we take a look through the other door, this is the kind of view you get from a minifigure like I, like lineup, I guess. And um, it's very, very imposing. I do love how sinister it looks from this angle. He looks quite menacing, really, doesn't he, um, from, from minifigure angle. Quite imposing, like you're going to fight a big, big monster. Now, of course, I've included the pillars here because they hold up the rooms in the ancient system, but I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't talk about them as a feature. You can see they can actually disconnect from every other section, meaning it's just a nice sort of filler section. However, the main feature of these is that they can, of course, be knocked over. They're only loosely connected on jumper stud, which is something that Colossus does indeed do in the battle if he runs into them and you get recovery hearts. Nothing like that here, but it's more atmosphere to add to the model and also just some more decoration and play, right? You could then pretend like someone could pick this up and chuck it at someone or it's debris to crush like enemies or, or even Link, you know, however you want to play. Um, but the point is it's something fun to knock over and um, I think they're really iconic to the boss room and I wanted to include them rather than just having all these empty uh, dark tank platforms. And here is the final section with the big man inserted in. It, of course, he's removable um, to add the legs, but you can see he actually does sit in like this golden trough, just like he does in the game. And you might be able to notice a glint of a reward sticking out behind him as well. Taking him off the stand, you can see the ball joints where he attaches, as well as um, we're just using some curved slopes to sort of like make this almost cup-like place where he sits, and of course you've got two Technic pins on the front, meaning you can attach this section uh, to any other uh, in the system. And around the back you can see some more pins, obviously, uh, so that you could attach rooms after this one, and of course the representation of the Sacred Flame in the same style as the uh, one of for Din in the Fire Sanctuary, that makes the second of the three for Sacred Flames have now appeared in various customs. Looks great here, it's a shame this piece has never been recolored, I think it does work wonderfully for that uh, representation. And then looking down the center uh, inside his little trough, you can see two ball joints, which is how uh, Coloctos does indeed attach, meaning that Coloctos sat down does indeed have a little bit of backwards and forwards motion, uh, meaning that uh, you can almost bend him forward to like slam into the floor, which is not something I show in the renders, but it is helpful for play. And you can see some tiles just to hold the thing together. And of course, it means that you can uh, slot him in without his legs on. Uh, and you can see here the reverse connectors on the other side. Uh, there are the other parts of the ball joints just sit on there. And then this uh, golden piece does just sit nicely between the studs and then doesn't get in the way. Taking a look at him when he sat in, you can see he just sits here. He's got his six arms in the various poses. I've tried to recreate the one from the game where he's got the uh, big fig fist recolored in gold and then some various weapons, which we'll come back to later. Um, and as I mentioned, he would be able to slide backwards and forwards ever so slightly. Here we go, we're removing him out, so you just pop him out, give him a little wiggle. The pieces have been locked in to make sure that you can do this securely. And then you've got this pack of accessories here, so six uh, weapons which are built out of a couple of pieces, and then the legs which just sit off the side, allowing you to attach them, and then of course you would change out the weapons. Uh, and of course to do that, you would remove these ones. So these are the weapons, uh, the thro throwing discs that he has uh, in the first phase of the battle when he throws them at you. And these are just made out of a three long bar attached to this new um, like blade piece, uh, which is you get four copies of in the set. It's like a semicircle, you attach them to the bar and then the bar just clips into the big fig hand. And of course you remove these four when he uh, stands up and then he gets these single blades, which are again a new mold that attaches to uh, just um, some studs at the end or, and the lightsaber piece uh, in order to fit in the big thick hand and then we've capped those off with Technic balls and you can see here that it's actually like a one-sided shallow mold to, to keep plastic costs down and it's sort of like a scimitar blade at a larger scale which is exactly what he needs because the existing scimitars are just too small. Now moving on to Coloctus and his articulation, you can see that his legs are duly articulated. We have knee articulation. It's debatable whether he's probably just potentially a little bit top heavy here, so um, maybe they'd have to reinforce him using bigger ball joints. However, um, I'm in studio, so I don't have the ability to test that. You can also see that on the bottom, he's got some tires uh, for um, 
uh, some added friction so that he doesn't slip and slide on, on soft surfaces. You'll see this in a lot of larger mechs these days, so I'm glad to be able to have included that. And then round the back, you can actually see that I decided to break up the pattern to include a Technic gear rack, meaning that uh, by turning this little knob round the back, you can violently swing the clock to his upper torso round and round and round, meaning he can quickly respond um, to like where Link is and like look around and such. So here you can see one minute he's here, then you turn the knob and whoosh, he's round the other side and then he's back again, um, backwards and forwards. So you've got that ability to turn his up and upper torso uh, using a, um, a little red knob at the back um, so kind of discreetly I guess and that would actually also work in the sat down position although it would be a bit harder to act it, um, like access because obviously it's going to be uh, below that little tr golden trough you can also see that uh, given his leg articulation, as I mentioned, he can bend down in order to look like he's smacking the ground and you can actually get a more accurate pose as you saw in the front of the box. But here you can see, of course, he can sort of break dance, but also he can actually like smash Link. So you can imagine like grabbing him from behind like a child and then like sort of bending him downwards, like smashing into the pillars or into like whatever's on the ground. He's got some great mech playability, which is why I wanted to turn him into a set. You can also see, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, you can get all of the arms in different positions. You've got some pointing forward, some pointing outwards, all the different points. And you can see that as he approaches uh, the dungeon build here. Uh, looking at the center of the chest, you can see he's been trying to be rounded off nicely. We're using a lot of curved slopes uh, to make sort of like this golden conish shape. It's a really awkward shape. I would describe it as almost bell-like. It sort of curves up and then curves in at the top, almost like a Christmas ornament. Um, very difficult to represent in form. If any of you have seen the existing mock um, that was done about a decade ago, the Spinning to Ideas, I believe that's the only other person that's tempted Coloctos and then published it to the internet at least. Um, and I, I'm not bragging, but the difference is just stark because of all the new parts available in 10 years, and, and mine is, is not good either. Um, you can see that around the torso, you've got the like purple like, gunk uh, that comes out between like the layers of the robot, and I've, I've shielded those off with um, a wheel arch element. You've then also got some curves which lead into a transparent dome, which has some printing on it. It's a printed piece um, to represent the cage above his heart, and I wanted to do this so that you could still see through it to see like, the weak spot, uh, but also so that you can actually like move it out the way so that you can attack the weak spot which we'll come back to later as that is an actual feature you can also see the arms here and how they're built using ball joints and then lead out to a technic element which we'll come back to later so here is that chest up close you can see the cage here as well as like uh the gunk more clearly you've got those wheel arches going around it and those wheel arches uh, surround some technic pins which of course connect to the arms which come out to here you've got this lovely technic element which i think works perfectly to represent like the whip holder on a pieces uh, where you would actually like stick the whip in which by the way the whip included can stick in them in order to yank his arms off and the arms are built in a way where they are weaker meaning that you can pull the arms off at like the wrist in a sense like where these are and um, so he can lose his arms and of course link can indeed hold the giant scimitars um, by the, the bar attachment which is something I wanted to include uh, so that he can then attack him with uh, the giant sword. Now following through that play pattern of course we've got to get the swords out of his hand which you can see clearly here. Uh, yeah he can grab them off the wrist, um, off the big thick hands and then um, use them to attack the torso. But before we get there, let's take a look at the face, which is potentially the most difficult part to build and the most iconic. You can see that it actually sits loosely in here, and that's for a reason we'll explain later. Uh, you're built around a square core, but you've got this golden cone that leads up to it, this deadpan mechanical expression. You've got some studs to represent the hair, as well as the crown with that dark red piece. And there are some wonderful cone elements that do a really good job at representing the funny little thing on the top of his head. But of course the chest is the main play feature here, so once we've grabbed the scimitar off the arms you can hack away at this uh, cage uh, and that will actually fold down out the way as you can see. So once you've like hacked it through you can like chop it off and that reveals the weak spot. And the weak spot actually pushes in and when you push it in, um, it's sort of like if you push it in violently it will actually pop the head out and that is because there's a slope in there so as you push the slope forward the slope forces this up and you can see here that the head goes flying just like it does at the end of the boss when it makes that weird <laughs> giggle noise um, which has freaked so many people out uh, but it basically means that you can actually play the boss and defeat it as you would expect and you'd actually find that on the bottom there is a heart container in using the red heart piece which I love the fact that we've been able to include I'm using this part a lot more and actually in the Disney 100 minifigure series it is actually coming in red for the second time, but this time is the first time without printing. Very excited about that because 
it's perfect for this use. Uh, and you can see here that it just sits underneath his head um, for you to collect as a reward as if the heart container drops when his metal body crashes to the ground. Uh, and that actually does it for all of the features in Wave 4. Well, and this custom set, we've got more to take a look at, of course, but this custom set is now finished, joining the lineup. This makes it our one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh set, third biggest, our um, second, third, fourth dungeon expansion, if you count the Ancient Machines Battle Pack, which I kind of don't, um, but definitely third if you count Arbitus Grands and Volvagio, which are actually from the dungeon system, and actually the second boss to appear in this wave, <laughs> um, kind of shockingly. Uh, either way, um, I think it's a fantastic set, but let's take a look at the figures. So first up here, we have the long overdue remake of Link from Skyward Sword. Now, obviously, back in the day, I did one, was the first set I ever did with um, the Fire Sanctuary, but this one's been updated with Jewel Modded Arms, Jewel Modded Legs, uh, the newer hairpiece that I used on the Twilight Princess Link, but obviously recolored using dark tan and green. He's got a new smile and a sword as well. But the most exciting thing about him, I think, in my opinion, beyond the fact that I got to upgrade one of my favorite designs for the character, as well as one of the first figures I ever did, and make him look actually decent, is the fact that I gave him a new accessory, and that is, of course, the whip, which I think is something that you can actually build in real life. Uh, the red whip piece in, exists in red from many cars and like Star Wars sets, and more recently, the Barrel Rock Brickhead. The teal ball definitely exists. I saw it very recently on the 2022 Christmas tree. And then a golden cone also exists, meaning you can recreate this iconic Skyward Sword accessory uh, right now um, for very little um, from a Bricklink order, most likely. And he holds it here, and of course you can interact with various things in the set using like the flexibility on the whip element. Next up, of course, we have the Curse Bow Coven, which of course has a unique head mold. He's actually reusing the um, prosthetic leg piece introduced with the City Grocery Store in 2022 uh, to represent his bony leg. Obviously, I chose to uh, like not include the shoe, but I want it to, to feel different, feel like a bone. He's also got a white arm, which is very, very skeletal. And of course, this new custom molded headpiece, which has like the broken horn on it and the rest of it. He's got like printing for the eye, lots of speckling, and then the, the teal tongue as well. Only thing he's missing is the earring. And then that brings us to the fourth and final figure, because of course you get two Casper Covens, uh, is the Stoutmaster. And he is an interesting build here, because he's a very hard thing to re recreate, but I think I've done my best. He's reusing the General Grievous body, uh, recolored instead of being in white and dark grey, it's in white and gold to represent his chest armour. You've got the four various arms leading into two weapons, uh, the Urukai blade, one of the Ninjago pieces, a uh, clay sword from Nexo Knights, and just a basic axe to represent uh, the different things we've got here. And he's using a 2010 fantasy helmet, which yeah, I realize isn't in production, but mm -hmm, give, give or take here. Um, he's got some eyes and a scary expression as well. Very interesting figure. He's got also some shoulder pads. Um, it's debatable how this would work, but you know, it, it's good for what it is without doing a custom mold. He's also using the uh, Wither Skeleton legs, uh, recolored white, as I did for my Stealth Force in Twilight Princess, which we'll be looking at in just a minute. And then, of course, the last thing to take a look at is Coloctos. And here you can see him in his sat down position. It sort of explains the body shape with like the various cavities, the grey bits on his arm and so on, and then of course the giant weapons uh, from his sitting down position. You can see what I mean about the little thing on the top which spews the, the liquid. It does look pretty accurate really, uh, and you've also got the dead panning system on the phrase. Potentially I could have done a better job with that print, but you've also got like the locks and like the conical shape with um, all of like the purple flowing through it, and then um, of course the legs and when he stands up. But I'm really pleased with how he turned out. I mean, there's no competition really, no one else has bothered to do one, so if you guys want to do a clock toss, um, please do it better than mine, because mine really isn't that good. Um, but I do like how he turned out, especially for someone that doesn't have much practice with mechs. Um, but of course, more importantly, I think to finish up with is the dungeon layout and comparing all the figures, which we'll get to in a second. So here you can see the layout, um, and I want to point out uh, the path on the middle right, which is where you can see the lily pads just behind Goma. Um, and I want to point out how much more depth that adds, because previously this path just continued in a straight line, but now it um, can sprawl even more thanks to the 45 degree angle. It also splits it off in two directions, so you've got Bongo Bongo in one direction, and Dead Hand and uh, the Arbiter's Grounds in another leading into the Sheikah Shrine. Over on the far left, of course, you can also see the other part. I chose to keep most of the Coloctos battle together um, so that you could have like the chest, but of course this will expand outwards because there's yet another dungeon builder set coming in this wave. But you can see here, I chose to keep him sat down so it's more of like an individual boss encounter. Uh, and this is an earned by the Shadow Temple Station. If any of these check uh, intrigue you, check out the various custom set playlists. Um, all of these have had their own video. Although the further back you go, the worse quality gets, but the Shadow Temple still is probably my favorite here. 
Although I do love the, just the scale of Kolobtos, who I was really, really scared to attempt because I just didn't know how it would turn out. And then taking a look at some of the figures, we've done quite a few new Link variants over the last couple of um, uh, sets, so I thought it was about time that I show you this image again. This is all of the Link figures that I've drawn up until this point. Of note, of course, the new Skyward Sword Link right um, above the original Skyward Sword Link uh, from Wave 1 with the cursed eyes. Um, some new additions also include the... Uh, the uh, like tropical vibes link from the hero of uh, from the, the beach attack the Lurelin village take back the sea that that's its name I, I didn't forget uh, snow crawl link from the nature attack and then of course there's a Vi link um, from uh, the Gulo fortress and then actually fire tunic link as well so we've had a lot of links over the last couple of sets I can't believe I forgot the name of um, summer vacation link from take back the sea oh anyway new sky sword link added to the list and here are the, the from the main six games or, or the big six as I would call them, uh, the 3D games. So you've got Child Link from Majora's Mask, you've got Adult Link from Oot, you've got TP Link, Wind Waker Link, Skyward Sword Link, and Breath of the Wild Link. I think uh, Young Link from MM needs an update, and uh, also Toon Link needs an update as well. But the other four I'm happy with, although I would like to change the positioning for Oot Link, I think, because it's the same as TP Link, and it's kind of sad. But um, then there's all the Stalfos, right? We've actually expanded our Stalfos lineup a lot recently, too. You have the original UOT one from back in Wave 2 Shadow Temple. You've got the Stalkin from the Arbiter's Grounds, which is a nano figure. You've got the Stalfos from TP, and then you've now got the Stal, uh, Stal Master um, from Skull Sword, again, using the same wither legs as the TP one. Um, that just leaves the Stal... Uh, Stout Foss from, well, the classic games, but also from uh, Skyward Sword, and um, Stout-like enemies from the other games as well. So um, still more to, to do from this family of enemy class. And then speaking of enemy classes, here is the Bokoban one I showed you just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but here you can see that not only do we still have the four variations from Breath of the Wild, but we also have the Skyward Sword Technoblin and Cursed Bokoblin. And technically, you want to count, we've got two variations of the Bublin from TP as well. So everyone that says I'm just Skyward Sword biased, yeah, you're just wrong. <laughs> um, and then adding to mainline series bosses, so these are all ones that I would count as boss encounters. You've got Suga from Age of Calamity, Mount Kosher, Calamity Ganon, uh, The Four Blights, Goma, uh, Chancellor Cole, Varty, Burn, and then of course stuff like Girahim, Zant, uh, TP Ganondorf, Demise, Phantom Ganondorf, Bongo Bongo, uh, Wind Waker Godan, and now Kolotos joins the lineup as well. Volvagia is missing from this page, I've just realised. Oh no, poor Volvagia. <laughs> And that is actually going to do it for today. That is all I have to show you for 00062, the Battle for the Sacred Flame. I have been sat on this custom for months, and I've been so excited to share it because I was so happy with it. Uh, I just didn't get around to drawing the figures. Um, but I'm really glad it actually happened now, of all times, because of it being pretty much three years since um, I drew the first figures for the Fire Sanctuary. Now, obviously, on the channel it's still only about two and a half years because i didn't post it till october but for me it is the beginning of march that represents uh when i made the fire sanctuary or end of february it's around that and the fire sanctuary was the first set that started us on this journey and obviously i've been waiting for lego zelda a lot longer but this started this journey and it all started with this guy right here um the first of the 3d figures i drew uh back in 2020 and three years on this is this is it this represents the beginning and the present in one figure and that's just cool to me but on that note we're going to leave things there uh let me know what you thought of this custom and the clock dots build down below in the comments and i will see you again very soon Bye bye